in Philadelphia, and it has come down to this. The winner of tonight's game will move on to the National League Championship Series, and for the loser, their season is over. It is the deciding game of the NLDS. Best of five between the underdog St. Louis Cardinals and the Philadelphia Phillies. And welcome everyone to Philadelphia. I'm Dick Stockton and this game would stand on its own. However, we have a unique situation tonight because we have a classic matchup on the mound. And Chris Carpenter and Roy Halladay, two of the premier pitchers of the game who have been very close friends for the last decade and are facing each other for the first time in their career. And as the situation would dictate, we have two former hurlers with us, Ron Darling and John Smoltz. John, your thoughts? Well, never has there been more pressure on a city than a team that has been built to win the World Series. And if they're going to continue, they pin their hopes on Doc Halliday. And I like their chances when you bring out the arguably best pitcher in baseball. Look what he did game one. Had a little bit of hiccups early with the three runs, but then settled down nicely and retired 21 straight. And for the other side, Carpenter, a team that's playing very loose, a miracle finish. They pin the hopes on Carpenter. And you know that the St. Louis Cardinals like their chances. Both teams have their aces going for them. Should be a lot of fun. I can't wait. And Ron, what's your take? Well, when you think about it, John and I did a game five at Yankee Stadium yesterday, and you knew the bullpen was going to get most of the big outs. They started two young starters. That's not going to happen here. There's no one in the bullpen that's any better than these two starters. And you can see their career just outstanding. Tony La Russa, since the Cardinals stole game two, has been waiting for this redemption for Carpenter in game five. Well, he's got it. All right, so the stage is set, and not to take a back seat are the sluggers. Ryan Howard looking to get on track at Albert Pujols of the Cardinals. And coming up, the starting lineups and the first pitch from Philadelphia. gets underway as the Phillies take the field and tonight's batting order brought to you by autotrader.com for the Cardinals Raphael Furcal will be a shortstop 
Skip Schumacher will be in center field batting second. Albert Pujols hitting third at first base. Lance Berkman will be in right field. Matt Holliday is in left. Yadier Molina behind the plate. David Fries at third base making his first start in the series is Nick Punto. He'll be at second base and Chris Carpenter batting ninth the pitcher facing Roy Halladay making his second start and was the game one pitcher for the Phillies. Well these guys when they get ready for a game any game every game's like a playoff game. They're very serious. They don't talk to anybody. They're into their mode. They're in the tunnel. And every pitcher in a game like this just wants to get into the flow. And sometimes it takes a little longer, Ron, to get into the flow. But if you can get into it right away, then it's just baseball is normal. What did Charlie Manuel say before the game? He says, what do you do to, to get Roy ready for these games? He goes, I say hello. And that's it. And very few people expected the Cardinals, first of all, to get into these playoffs. And second of all, to extend a team that... Had their franchise year with 102 wins, John, to be extended to five games. Absolutely, and you're in a place right now with one of the greatest home field advantage. You want to keep your fans as into the game as possible. Be careful with Rafael for calling the first pitch. He's been known to try and jump that pitcher's fastball, but Doc Halliday has all of these kind of reports in his back pocket. Raphael for call. Stepping in, and the rally towels are out in force here in Philadelphia. For call had a first inning single and a stolen base against Halliday in game number one. One and oh the count. Switch hitting for call. One for his last 11. Quiet from the Dodgers. Battled hamstring problems at the end of the year. One and one. Her call will be followed by Schumacher and Pujols. Two and one. Well, the players aren't the only ones that have pressure. The home plate umpire with these two great pitchers, they're going to make it awfully difficult because they normally hit their spots. And we'll see what kind of game Gary is behind the plate. And there's a drive hit to right center field. Victorino chases it, and it's over his head and off the wall. For call, rounding second and heading for third as the ball gets loose in the outfield end. A lot closer than expected with the ball getting loose. And Raphael for call with a leadoff triple to start the game. It doesn't matter if the Cy Young's on the mound. If you get behind these hitters, 2-1 count. They are going to tee off. Little fastball up in the strike zone by Hall Halliday over the head of Gold Glover Victorino in center field. And by the time he picks it up, he misses the cutoff, man. It bounces on nothing. So by the time Rollins gets it, a slide and a triple. And Skip Schumacher. Who is five for eight, hitting 625 in this series? Looks at a breaking ball on the outside corner for a strike. Here's a situation right here that you don't wait for anybody else to get the job done. You get the ball on the ground somewhere, get the run in, get your team ahead. Don't rely on anybody else to do the job. Because what Doc Halliday is really good at, he can get three outs before that runner scores just as easy. They always talk about him working the outside three inches of each corner of the plate when guys are on base it's the last inch of each corner of the plate just getting a piece of it is schumacher interesting that in that game one he led off the second inning with a single before halliday re retired 21 in a row and there's Pujols on deck we're going to get Doc. It has to be early. Cardinals took the season series from the Phillies 6-3. to three. Although, as Charlie Manuel points out, the last three occurred after the Phillies had clinched the division. Just missed outside. One and two. Boy, good pitch there, John. You see Ruiz behind the plate. Lots of movement. Might have taken that away.
And a good at bat for Skip Schumacher here. Already the Cardinals have worked the count with for a call to get the 2 1, and Schumacher now has fouled off four real difficult pitches. One thing as a hitter here, you give up of yourself with any thought of getting a hit with two strikes. Put it in play, cut down your swing, and the Cardinals will be leading one nothing. Here's the one-two pitch. And the target was outside the strike zone, and that's where the pitch went, hoping that Schumacher would chase it, and it's two and two. Who holds on deck and Lance Berkman to follow? And another foul ball. I think if you're Gary Cedarstrom, the home plate umpire, you can't be enticed or intoxicated by the greatness of both these pitchers. You want to call strikes. You know they can make the pitches, but you have to make sure they're on the corners. Make it fair for both teams. And the ball hit off to the right foul. Speaking of the umpires, Gary Cedarstrom calling balls and strikes. Chad Fairchild is the umpire at first. Chris Guccione at second. Jerry Meals at third. Crew chief Jerry Lane down the left field line. And Angel Hernandez is the umpire down the right field line. Two balls and two strikes to Schumacher for a call with a leadoff triple. The tenth pitch of the at bat and a line drive down the right field line. And it is a fair ball into the corner. For Paul will score and Schumacher will go into second with a double. So a pair of extra base hits and the Cardinals have taken a one to nothing lead. Well what you have here is the hitter fit fouled off every great pitch that Halliday threw and the one bad pitch that he could hit he took advantage of it a hanging curveball to the middle of the plate. These are the kind of things early on I talked about getting into the flow. Well, now Doc's going to have to be pressed into that flow of being perfect for most of the rest of this inning and the game. And here's Albert Pujols, who's had a big series average-wise, and he fouls off the first pitch. Pujols had a four-hit game in which he had three doubles, but he has had only one run batted in and a chance to give the Cardinals another run with Schumacher in scoring position. And he gets jammed in a pop-up that Utley goes to third. And out at third base is Schumacher. An alert play by Chase Utley on a ball that had a lot of English run. And he managed to get Schumacher at third, a big first out for the Phillies. Well, the problem here is here, Pools gets jammed, but bad read by Schumacher off the bat. You can see Pools saying, leave, go. That ball's going to drop in. Utley playing on the grass. He's not going to get to it. Schumacher's got to get to third base. Alert by Utley. And Utley, who was caught at third earlier in the season, catches someone else. Yes, in the last game, Albert Pujols came off the bag and nailed him going to third when he was running on a ground ball. So there's one away, and now who holds the base runner at first? Well, there's these type of t points in the game you hope don't come back to haunt you. They're one for one. One good job getting the runner in. One job of not getting the good jump you need to create more pressure for the Phillies. This Let's Phillies go. team is one of those teams where you've got to create pressure on the pitcher, and that was one thing that let him off the hook. Lance Berkman, who hit a three-run homer off of Halliday in the first inning of game one, has four runs batted in, and in fact, two homers against Halliday in the last month. And the ball getting away from Carlos Ruiz, and Pujols will move down to second base. Boy, these are things you just don't see happen to the Phillies early in the Halliday start. A couple of mistakes with breaking balls for base hits, extra base hits, and a ball eluding Ruiz. The catcher, who's one of the best in the game. A wild pitch has been charged to Roy Halladay. So the Cardinals with their third runner in scoring position here in the first inning. Count is one and one to Lance Berkman. One and two. And this was the home run in the first inning that gave the Cardinals a three to nothing lead, stunning this crowd. 
And the Phillies came back and won. You know, Tony La Russa talked about Bergman saying he's such a pro. He's just one of those guys that is ready to hit the first pitch, but he can also has great plate recognition. Next pitch will be the 20th here in the top of the first. Two balls, two strikes to Berkman with Matt Holliday on deck. Fouling it off, and the count remains two and two with Lance Berkman talking about what a pitcher has. He's just, and now they're saying. He was hit by the pitch. Catcher's interference. Catcher's interference. Yep. Sometimes you cannot blame the catcher for catcher's interference. What happens is that the hitter will swing so late. That's what happened to Berkman. He is fooled by the pitch, swings so late that he swings right down on the glove of Ruiz, causing this catcher's interference, just catching the tip of his glove. Charlie Manuel out to uh, get the ruling from Gary, Gary Cedarstrom, and it was uh, clear that the glove was out there and the bat hit it. So now the runners are at first and second. I've always hated that rule because if you you're rewarded for swinging poorly. So Matt Holliday, who made his first start in Game Four, stepping in and taking ball one. So uh, for Roy Holliday. Uh, a struggle so far in this first inning. Well, what the Cardinals have done a good job is spoiled every really tough pitch he's thrown. And when you face Doc Holliday, that's exactly what you have to do. Easier said than done. And one thing in the in a game like this, when you have hitters that are patient and don't speed the game up, you got a chance against a great pitcher. One and one to Matt Holliday, and in his first start went one for three. Was hit by a pitch and scored two runs. Yadier Molina on deck. And Matt Holliday swings and misses. And now it's one and two. Trying to get out of a first inning jam. And one run wouldn't be all that bad for Roy Holliday. Catcher's interference call, by the way, goes as an error charge to Ruiz. That's the second error of the series charged to the Phillies. One ball and two strikes. Two and two. Roy Halliday giving up three runs in the first game of the series. Phillies came back and won three of the four games. The team that took the lead ended up on the short end. Yeah, as long as it's not a really big inning and you haven't gotten your team too far behind, we've all seen Doc run off 20, 19, shoot perfect games. And a full count. First three and two count we've had in this first inning. Twenty-eight pitches thrown by Roy Halladay, and a pop-up in foul territory. Placido Polanco has a play and makes the catch for the second out, and the runners hold. Who holds at second and Berkman at first? Well, when a guy has an injury, you're going to try to find out how difficult he is to swing the bat. He goes with a cutter away, and then he starts throwing some harder cutters. Look, Halliday doesn't throw anything straight. Two seamer in, another seamer in, and then he tries to get him to chase out of the strike zone. And he doesn't bite. Good discipline, and then he hangs a, a he doesn't hang a curveball. He makes a good curveball that he pops up to the third baseman. So with two down and two on, Yadier Molina, the Cardinal catcher. Three of 15 and one run batted in, hitting 200 in the series. And one for eight lifetime against Halliday. And it's 
foul back. And the Milwaukee Brewers have defeated the Arizona Diamondbacks 3-2 to two in a deciding fifth game. So the winner of this contest will go against the Milwaukee Brewers in the National League Championship Series that you will see on TBS. That series will begin Sunday. They certainly have some attention. They're going to be watching here to see if they start at home or make their trek out here to open up the Philly. Check swing by Molina, and it's one and one. I don't know if I've ever seen Holiday throw this many breaking pitches in the first inning. Trying to get these St. Louis Cardinals hitters to bite, they are not so far. But with the leadoff triple and a double, to get out of this with only one run would be major for Halliday. Two and one. And a ground ball to Rollins. He'll get the force, and that'll do it. 33 pitches thrown by Roy Halladay, but for Hall's triple and Schumacher's RBI double, giving the Cardinals a one nothing lead. The Phillies coming up in the first. the first inning and now the Phillies coming up against Chris Carpenter and today's batting order brought to you by autotrader.com for the Phillies Jimmy Rollins red hot leading off Chase Utley has been great batting second Hunter Pence hitting third and Ryan Howard batting cleanup Shane Victorino in the fifth slot Raul Abanez batting sixth in the seventh position Placido Polanco Carlos Ruiz hitting eighth and Roy Halladay batting ninth against Chris Carpenter going on normal rest tonight after lasting three innings in game two. Well, these guys are out of the same mold. Big guys that use their front leg and really get through their pitches. Three-quarter arm delivery with a lot of different stuff they can throw at you. Carpenter 11 and 9 and uh, pitched more innings than anyone in the National League with 237 and a third. Well, it doesn't look like great numbers for Carpenter, but he started one and seven. He finished 10 and two. That's more like Carpenter's numbers. And did not get the run support for most of the season. 0 oh, 2. And Rollins hits it in the air to right center field. Schumacher calling for it and makes the catch. And Rollins is retired, coming in with nine hits. 
leading the Phillies. Let's take a look at the Cardinals defensively, and Schumacher played only one game in center field in the regular season. They see Pujols with the two gold gloves and the three gold gloves from Molina, one of the best defensive catchers in the game. But the Cardinals were a team that had their problems defensively during the course of the year as Chase Utley steps up. Utley has been on base ten times, has two doubles and a triple to scored five runs. So the Phillies offense, no complaints with Rollins and Utley to start the lineup. Yeah, they've created havoc, and normally when they do that, that spells trouble for the opposing pitcher. I think for Carpenter today, a big, big, big time success factor is going to be how he handles his curveball. It's a weapon he can go to at any time. If he's throwing for strikes like that, it's going to be a good game. 0 oh 2 to Utley with Hunter Pence. On deck for the Phillies. Utley's have it, had an injury marred season. We were talking to Charlie Manuel today. He said, listen, when he's at top of his game, he's delivering 25 to 30 home runs, driving in 100 scoring 100 but right now is about three quarters of the player he can be so that's why I put him in the two hole well, he hadn't really hit and then uh, you turn on the lights in postseason and he comes alive and Utley strikeout victim here and there are two down on the first strikeout for Carpenter well basically what we talked about is if he's got this pitch going it's such a great change of speed 74 miles an hour with a 94 mile an hour fastball Awfully tough to hit when the hitter sees it at one plane and it drops about three feet. That's going to be difficult. That brings up Hunter Pence. Big acquisition from the Houston Astros. Perhaps the final piece of the puzzle for the Phillies. Hit 260, hitting 267. And Hunter Pence with four RBIs in this series. He has four hits, but all of them have been singles. Strike one to him. John, you talked about that first game where Carpenter only went three innings. Charlie Manuel said they were taking that pitch down out of the strike zone, but Carpenter has countered in this game by trying to pump in that first pitch strike. Well, he's got a full assortment of pitches that he can go to. He's developed a hard cutter, messes with a split a little bit, but I think the command of his fastball, he can run it into right-handers away from lefties, but that big curveball, as we talked about, is a built-in change of speed that gets guys off of his fastball. The 2-1 pitch, and grounded to for call, and Chris Carpenter, a lot better in this outing than he had in the first inning in his first appearance. 1-2-3 inning, Phillies are retired.
aerial coverage are brought to you by AT&T. Rethink possible and don't miss a moment of Conan all new weeknights on TBS. Cardinals coming up in the top of the second inning with the bottom third of their batting order and David Freeze, who is the batting hero in game four. As the Cardinals won to force a deciding game tonight. And the first pitch in for a strike from Roy Halliday. Halliday threw 33 pitches in the first inning. And the Cardinals jumped on him with a triple and a double, scored a run, and then shut the door, but not before the Cardinals had many good at bats to count 0 oh 2 to Freeze. Halliday does is it's almost like judging what the hitters are going to do against them in the first and they weren't coming out of their shoes trying to swing because everybody knows when you face Halliday it's 0 2 before you get a chance to do anything so why take pitches. Two balls and two strikes Halliday second in the National League with a 2.35 earned run average and tied for third in the league in strikeouts. And Freeze strikes out for out number one in the second inning. Well, the big story in St. Louis, the Squirrels, perhaps. I think they've made an appearance here, Craig Sager. Well, you know, Dick, superstition does play a major role in baseball lore, and yes. The Cardinals rally squirrel has appeared in Philadelphia. We sure first saw him Wednesday night running across home plate just prior to the Cardinals rally to put that game away. And then sure enough two nights later Tony La Russa predicted that we would see the squirrel here in Philadelphia. And the squirrel is out there prior to today's game. <laughs> running across the field during the Phillies pregame warm up. And that again is Roy Oswald having problems with the squirrel. Now during that stretch run in September. Line drive right to Polanco for the second out. Now during that stretch run in September, the Cardinals had a rallying cry. Win one for Torty. That was Alan Craig's pet tortoise. Torty. Now uh, Larusa says Torty and Scaredy are in a suite up here watching the game. <laughs> and Dick, Sweet. that's the story in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> Here is Carpenter with a ground ball to Rollins. They have a nicer suite than we have. <laughs> One, two, three inning. Cardinals retired in order in the second.
HD by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Well, Ryan Howard will lead off for the Phillies in the bottom of the second inning. And all of Philadelphia and Charlie Manuel waiting for Howard to write himself at the plate. He is two for 15. He has a three-run homer for one of those hits, but he is 0 for his last 11 with six strikeouts after a single to knock in a couple of runs in game number two. That right there is a perfect example as a pitcher. That tells me he's trying to get it going. He's trying to get the bat and the barrel out, trying to beat the fastball, and he's just too aggressive. Plate awareness is gone, and he's pressing. And in a short series, that's what can happen. But in 162 games, it'll even itself out. One and one to Howard with Victorino and Abanez to follow here in the second. It's sharply, but right at Nick Punto. And Howard is retired now. 0 for his last 12. One gone in the second with Shane Victorino stepping up. It's been a struggle for the middle of that batting order with Howard with 133. And Pence, one for his last 10. And Victorino with four hits all singles. Foul. Third baseman David Freeze playing a few steps in at third, respecting the bunt possibility. Well, Victorino's been their most versatile offensive performer. This is his 24th time hitting in the five hole. He's led off 51 times. He's hit first, second, and third in this Phillies lineup. You're talking about the bottom of the order, middle of the order, Dick. We get down to the bottom of the order, get to Ruiz and Polanco, three for 30. It's not going to make it work. One and one. One of the things that every club has to have is the fear factor. And for the longest time, they could hit a lot of home runs, score some runs, and they had that fear in that offense. Now their pitching staff has become the fear factor because they quiet all the offense. But you do have to score to win. And we saw this last year when San Francisco came in and basically shut down the line. There are hitting inconsistencies that the Phillies fall into every now and then. We've seen it in the last few years. They dropped eight in a row toward the end of the year, then won four straight. And we're hitting well then. And that's always a concern for Charlie Manuel. You know, John mentioned it before. Teams that during the regular season spend most of their time scoring majority of their runs with the home run. It dries up in the postseason. It just does not happen. You don't see a lot of Lance Berkman three-run home runs in the postseason. Two and two to Victorino. Tony La Russa set up his rotation with an eye to game number five, and that's why he went with Chris Carpenter on short rest in the second game of the series. Of course, he wasn't counting on a three-inning stint in game number two, but he's got his man out there tonight. And a line drive down the right field line. Fair ball into the corner. Lance Berkman goes after it. Victorino with speed, and he'll stop at second base with a one-out double in the first hit of the game for the Phillies. Well, whenever you watch Victorino, down and in from the left side is his strength, and that's where that pitch is, more of the middle of the plate. But always hustle from Victorino, this ball down the line. By the time Berkman gets to it, no chance to make a play at second base for the flying Hawaiian. Well, he's so far on the plate, he invites you to throw it in there, and any movement back over the middle gives him the luxury to keep it fair. Most guys can't even keep that ball fair. Raul Abanez, the left fielder, and at age 39, the oldest Philly on what is a veteran team up and down the batting order. Banyas with a two-run homer and an RBI and single in game number one is driven in four runs, and he takes a strike from Parker. He went through a tough stretch this year where his swing got long, and he was struggling for a period of time, and he caught fire later in the season, and to beat him with fastballs has been the play for the season most of the part but you still have to mix it up and make him aware of that inside part. missing outside with the curveball and the count one and one so the Phillies have the time run in scoring position 
with one away here in the second. Guys, you wouldn't usually steal third base with a left-handed hitter up, but Freeze is so far off the bag that if Victorino goes, the hardest part for Freeze is running, catching the ball, and applying the tag all in one motion. Foul ball as Sam Palazzo, the first base coach of the Phillies. And it's one and two. Phillies were in first place all year and setting a franchise record with 102 victories. And if they win this game, they'll go to the National League Championship Series for the fourth consecutive season. Stop on the pitch in the dirt by Molina. Talk to anyone around the, uh, the major leagues. One of the best in baseball has got to be Molina. Not only does he block the ball, but he smothers it, catches that right in his chest protector, moves forward on the baseball, and makes sure that it only goes a foot or two feet away from him. Three gold gloves for Yadier Molina. Remains two and two to Ibanez. Charlie Manuel, who has just led the Phillies to their fifth straight National League East title, managed the world champion in 2008, and got to the series in 09 as well. Popped up. Pujols backing up, and Punto makes the catch in foul territory as Pujols and Punto were within the inches of each other, and that'll be the second out here in the second inning. Tony La Russa, third most winningest manager of all time, 13 division titles, five pennants, and two world championships, one in each league. You know what I got from our meetings with both managers today? How ebullient and smiling and happy they were. They just loved the competition of this entire event. Couldn't wait to get to this game five. And they loved the setting. Yes. Two down to Placido Polanco. Oh, for his last seven. Breaking ball misses. It's one and oh to Polanco. Victorino with a one-out double. Cardinals are leading one to nothing. Phillies batting in the second. Of the deciding game five. One and one. Well, for Chris Carpenter, again, if you have never watched him pitch too often, he is a fierce competitor with stuff that obviously is an ace. And he has pitches that cut like this, a hard slider. It's rare you throw a hard slider, big curveball, and, and have those variances without them two becoming one. A lot of pitches, those two pitches might be a slurve. Malongo with a ground ball to for call, and that'll do it. The one out double by Victorino, and he is stranded at second. We go to the third here at Citizens Bank Park. The Cardinals lead the Phils one to nothing.
career performer. And an anniversary tomorrow, 55 years ago tomorrow, Don Larson pitched the perfect game against the Dodgers in the 56 World Series. Whew, I can't even imagine that. Roy Halladay on that list, 21 consecutive outs as for call leading off in the third, swinging at the first pitch and grounding out to Udley, one away to Skip Schumacher. When you see Doc Halliday pitch. This is the best visual I can give you. When we watch these mechanics, right about here, he's got a tray like a waiter holding it up right here, a perfect position to deliver the baseball. And he repeats his mechanics so good that that's why he's one of the best. I mean, it's unbelievable. He puts the ball where he wants to. But imagine a waiter holding a tray. That's how he gets the baseball to the position. 1-0 to Schumacher, who knocked in the Cardinals' run with a double into the right field corner in the first inning. And the count 1-1 one one to Skip Schumacher. Halliday and Carpenter both listed at 6'6", 230 pounds, both picked by the Toronto Blue Jays in the first round. Carpenter in 92 and Halliday in 95. So many similarities. And the two are been close. They go fishing after the season. Only difference between the win total for both, some injuries to Chris Carpenter during his career. Halliday is ahead of Schumacher, one and two. Opposite field drive to left field. Abania is coming over and makes the catch. Took off at the crack in the bat did Raul Abanez, and at 39 could still make the play in left field. There are two down for the Cardinals in the third. Well, Schumacher trying to go coast to coast. This ball is supposed to be in, ends up away, slices it towards left field, but Abanez had him played perfectly towards the line, and with a good run, makes a fine catch. And here's Albert Pujols, who reached on a fielder's choice. And advance the second, a wild pitch in the first inning. 1 0 to Pujols. When you talk about these guys' friendship and former teammates, they both come in with the unwritten rule know that they're allowed two mistakes, two <laughs> runs, because they respect each other that much that you feel like, okay, two runs is not going to beat me. And I've got those two. Right now it's one for Halliday, zero for Carpenter. John, we ought to have a separate scoreboard for the mistakes. <laughs> that's, that's right. To decide this game. There's a call strike. And. One and two as Halliday gets ahead of Pujols as well. Foul ball. That was the 50th pitch thrown by Roy Halliday. Foul ball as Jose Akendo, the Cardinals third base coach. Albert Pujols is so hard to pitch to because he stays on so many pitches. Sometimes slower than slow will actually give you an advantage against him. Like that. Strikes out. Second strikeout of the game for Holiday, who retires the side in order. Eight in a row set down by Halliday. Cardinals lead one to nothing.
Here in the third inning, John Jay has gone into play center field. Skip Schumacher has left the game. In game number four, he had a problem with a hamstring on a swing. Not sure whether that's the problem, but Schumacher is out of the game. This after driving in the Cardinal run with a double. What a shame. He had a couple of real solid at-bats against Holiday. And the Phillies batting in the third inning, the number eight hitter, Carlos Ruiz, followed by Roy Halladay, then the top of the order against Chris Carpenter. And the first pitch is a strike. Breaking ball hit into the air to right center field. And Lance Berkman makes the catch. Ruiz now one for 15 in the series. One away. And so Roy Halladay is coming up to face his friend, Chris Carpenter. I'll tell you, Doc's worked at it a little bit. Got a little more respectable at, at the plate coming over from the American League. These Phillies take pride in everything that they do, especially getting bunts down. But they're starting to look, yeah, just swing the bat a little bit. Well, you, you look at all the National League teams that are in the playoffs. Their pitchers are athletes. They can get the job done. They can drive in runs. They can field their position. Two strikes to Halliday, who had an infield hit in the first game of the series. It was one for four. How friendly can you be if you throw him an all one hook? That's yeah, not he broke nice. the rule. He broke the cardinal rule. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he'll have to pay for that when he goes back to. Mentioned the 6 6 230. And Halliday strikes out. Two gone here in the third inning. Second strike out of the game for Chris Carpenter. Again, the, looking at these uh, two tall pitchers, both drafted by Toronto, and they got to know each other in the minor leagues and really talked baseball and what they wanted to do as pitchers back then. I know they're applying their trades with a different team now. Very rare do you have two pitchers drafted by one organization to have that many accolades. Here is Jimmy Rollins, who fly to center field his first time up. Rollins, with nine hits, is the batting leader for the Phillies in this series. Been on base ten times. Chop, fair ball, Pujols flips to Carpenter. And a one, two, three inning. We have completed three in the deciding game of this division series. The Cardinals won the Phillies nothing.
seconds ago when he fouled the ball down the first base line. Jimmy sees it at foul. Now the call is, of course, Chad Fer Fairchild, the first base umpire, once it passes the bag, he has the call. Before the bag, home plate umpire, Cedarstrom has the call. But I'm with Jimmy. I thought that ball, as it came off the bat, I thought it was foul. And he is feeling incredulous. Of course, the umpires don't have the benefit of slow motion and seeing it several times. Lance Berkman lines it foul for strike one starting the fourth inning. Berkman uh, reached on a catcher's interference in the first inning. Cardinals held to one run after they had two runners on, and there's a drive hit to center field. Victorino, plenty of room. Berkman is retired. For the first out in the fourth, and Matt Holiday will come up. Each pitcher talked about getting into the flow of the game. They're there. <laughs> it's part of the big moment anticipation. Get out. You want to establish yourself. Holiday gave up the one run, harmless. He knows that if he keeps it right there, his team's going to score a run. And it's now up to the hitters to take advantage of whatever little room or mistake the pitchers make. Because it's going to be tight from here on in. First pitch to Holiday, ball one. Fouled out to Polanco, who made the catch near the stands his first time up. Holiday working quickly, takes something off that pitch, and the count one and one to the Cardinal left fielder. Nobody gets to the inside of their leg better than he does. When he finishes, he doesn't spin off to the first base size. He's got such a balanced position. Watch when this leg lands and he really makes that pitch and he stands in a position where he can field his, his uh, position as well. Yeah, and John, you mentioned it's kind of a stiff front leg for Halliday. He doesn't land on a collapsed leg and kind of just gravity takes him over that front leg. Here's the one two pitch and it's fouled off John does uh, that style remind you of any other pitcher you've seen you know it's interesting because when everyone knows about that article what what, what happened to him when he was struggling he went back and redefined his position we look at here I mean these two guys are similar he ducks a little bit it's a little bit of a Jack Morris and but not, not quite the way they land holiday fouls this off his uh, leg boy Matt holiday has had uh, a rough year Fighting injuries and the latest of course has been the uh, tendon in his right hand That's not the only problem he's had as he fouls this off the foot I think he got this off the shin let's take another look Yeah, right off the inside knee and shin that is so painful. I saw the Cardinals Trainer thinking of coming out. If you're not going to come out now. It's the postseason. You got to come out every time what does a veteran pitcher do in this situation right here? Right back in there, John. <laughs> you go right back in there. <laughs> Let's hear it. The one two pitch. Chases an outside pitch, strike three. And that's the third strikeout for Roy Halliday. Two out in the fourth. Molina. Coming up. Well, he did just the opposite. I'm sure if you're ha <laughs> Matt, you're thinking, oh, he's going to come back in here last minute. It didn't really matter. He didn't want any part of that no, at bat didn't. after that foul pitch. Good cutter. That ball just keeps scraping away from the hitter. 1 0 to Molina. Thirty two pitches in the first inning. Round ball hit up the middle and a base hit for Yadier Molina. Two out single is the third hit of the game against Roy Halladay, who gave up a triple and a double to start the game. Double by Schumacher, who knocked in the only run, and Schumacher had to leave the game because of an injury, and John Jay replaced him in center field. So here's David Freeze with one on and two out. Chasing. 0 and 1. That's just knowing your scouting report. Anybody <laughs> who would chase a first pitch, obviously looking like for a heater, would swing at a curveball out of the zone. That's knowing 
the type of hitter you've got and taking advantage of it. Strike two to David Freeze, who has struck out eight times already in this series. Freeze might not get another fastball for a strike this entire game. There goes Molina. And the pitch taken for a ball. And Molina is into second base. And the count one and two to Freeze. Boy, instinctually, Molina just so sharp out there. Takes the extra base because they did not hold him on and puts himself in a place to score a second run. Just getting a piece of it is Freeze. Cardinals scored their run in the first inning, and Schumacher was at second. And then a play made at third where Schumacher tried to go to third base on a ground ball in Utley. Threw him out of third. Cardinals left two on base in that inning. And Freeze strikes out for the second time in the game. And four strikeouts for Halliday. The Cardinals get a hit, but in the middle of the fourth inning, it's one to nothing. Upload a picture of your youth player, and you can win tickets to the 2011 postseason, among hundreds of other MLB prizes. Be a part of the Chevy Centennial Celebration and enter for a chance to win at ChevyBaseball.com. We've had nothing but a sea of red throughout this series. Uh, the red of the Phillies, and of course, uh, the same story in St. Louis, and both fans. Of both cities waving their white rally towels as Chase Utley starts it off in the fourth inning, taking ball one. You mentioned, Ron, early about Chase Utley and hitting. When you don't have your lower half completely under you, you're, you are a different hitter. And this guy was as scary and put up numbers kind of like Cano. And he's been battling through it. He's a tough player. He just doesn't have the rotation on his lower half to deliver that kind of power that we're used to seeing. You know what's interesting when you watch Chase Utley play over the course of his career. I don't think anyone in the game plays any harder than he does. And I think the way he plays has caused some of these injuries to mount over the course of his career. He had 520 home run seasons before injuries started to get to him last year. Here's the one more <laughs> curveball. Strike two to Utley. Be followed by Hunter Pence and Ryan Howard. Here in the fourth inning, Phillies trying to get some production from the middle of the order. 
Not to mention the back of the order, which uh, hasn't done much. Ball four, and Utley, hit by the pitch, is on. Moments ago, we spoke with Cardinals manager Tony LaRusa. And Tony, so far, the game is advertised? Well, I think so. Dick, uh, first of all, our guys are sharp, but there are many pitches around, and they first thing give a triple and a double with the middle of our lineup, and we don't get another one, so they're both very good. Well, you got your guy on four days rest, and uh, he looks awfully sharp, commanded his fastball. Yeah, and he's going to he's get that curveball going early just to give him something else, but, you know, he's got uh, his movement, and he's going to be tough to score on, too, but we need to add something just to give him a chance to make a mistake and not make a penalty. What about Schumacher? What was the problem there? Pulled an oblique. Which is, uh, you know, he's probably had the best two at bats on our ball club against him, but uh, an oblique, I think it was his left side, so we had to remove him. All right, Tony, thank you. Here's one out, and Hunter Pence with a grounder to the right side, and Utley is forced to second with Ryan Howard coming up. He grounded to Punto at second his first time up. Well, here's another case right here, Ron. Again, if you're a pitcher on the mound, you can try to see how aggressive he's going to be. Pitch a couple balls out of the zone. Hope that he swings and just have that feel that you don't have. If you don't have to throw a guy a lot of strikes, don't do it. Howard over his last 12. And there's a drive caught by Punto, the throw to first. Not in time for the double play. So Nick Punto making. A fine play timing that jump perfectly. Well, it's one of the reasons Dick Proto is in the lineup. He made a nice play in that ground ball. And this, a jam shot from Howard. The tough part about this for a second baseman is the timing of the leap. You see that done early, too early sometimes. But Proto with a nice play makes it look easy. And the underhand toss trying to complete the double play. And Pence gets back. And there is Proto starting his first game of the series. And he's played his career with the Minnesota Twins before coming over to the Cardinals so Howard is retired for the second time and here is Shane Victorino who has the only Phillies hit a double into the right field corner one to nothing Cardinals lead in the fifth and deciding game of this division series he's playing a few steps in at third and the first pitch down low to Victorino ball one What makes the playoffs not only elimination game so incredible is the fact that in a regular season game man on first two outs no big deal It's a rally everything's a rally when you get in the playoffs guy on first oh my gosh And I think that's the one thing the less you can have those stress pitches and runners on second and third and all you're facing is two out issues You're gonna be okay Two balls and no strikes to Victorino by Victorino. Hunter Pence will go to third and the Phillies have runners at first and third and two away. Victorino two for two in the game. And Ibanez coming up. Well this situation right here he did what he had to do. Pujols was holding on but he found the hole and again two outs. First and third better than First and third, nobody out or one out. You know what's interesting about that is Pujols held his ground. He didn't get off the bag five or six feet. He wanted to make sure that he would not allow a double down the line. Double down the line would score Pence. He's given his pitcher Carpenter with two outs. Another shot to get out of the inning. And Raul Labanez, who has uh, four runs batted in in this series. Victorino had three hits in game one of the series. Knocking in two runs was one for 12 since. And has come back and has been a Force here for the Phillies. Tying run is at third. Go ahead, run at first. Down low for ball one. The luxury of having 
Molina catching you here with a guy who throws a lot of curveballs and lives in the dirt. You have no fear that he's not going to block it. It's a, it's a luxury for a pitcher. That ball, there you don't have to hang on and aim that pitch. You can just throw it knowing that your guy is as good as it gets back there. Molina this year become more of an offensive force, let his team in hitting become really more of a complete catcher. One and one as Ibanez fouls it back. You don't want to throw too many fastballs to Ibanez, but if you're going to, you have to tie him up inside. Perfectly placed pitch there by Carpenter. Hunter Pence is third, and Victorino on at first. Two away here in the fourth inning. Foul back, and the count is one and two. Ibanez, two for 14 against Chris Carpenter. Runners at the corners with two away. Cardinals scoring their run in the first inning for Paul with the leadoff triple. Schumacher with a run scoring double, and he came out of the game suffering a pulled left oblique. Close, two and two. Ryan Howard trying to find the answer in this decisive game. Big run producer. Has had a long drought since that opening game. But here's Abanez with the count two and two. And a three and two count to Abanez with runners at first and third and Placido Polanco waiting to hit. Well, now Pujols is going to back off the bag, try to give him a little more advantage to fielding the ball. The runner's going to get a running start. This is the first three ball count for Chris Carpenter. Runner off at first and a fly ball hit to right field. Lance Berkman on the warning track. And he makes the catch to retire the side. Close for Raul Abanez as the Phillies lead two. We go to the fifth inning with the Cardinals still up one to nothing.
to Nick Punto, who aligned to Polanco his first time up. Punto, the eighth hitter in the Cardinal lineup. Pitcher Chris Carpenter up next in the count. Two balls and no strikes to Punto, who uh, has played in two postseasons with the Twins in 06 and again in 09. Two and one. And that's why he can start him in a game like this. You know, he hasn't played all series. It's a couple of at-bats, but he can start him in game five because he needs a defensive help for Carpenter, but he knows he has all that experience. Invaluable, particularly in a game like this. Ball strike, two and two. Halliday gets even with Punto after falling behind. A line drive to the opposite field, base hit for Nick Punto, starting off the fifth inning for the Cardinals. Moments ago, we spoke with Phillies pitching coach Rich Duby, and so uh, looks like Roy Halladay after that uh, first inning settling down as he did in Game One. Yeah, very similar to Game One. Uh, you know, get off to a rocky start, and then uh, seems like he's got a test of waters and gets a little angry. It looks like and uh, settled in nicely. You know, Rich, there's a real art, though, to pitching with runners in scoring position. Halliday is good as anyone. What does he do that's better than others? He doesn't panic. Uh, I mean, he understands about making pitches, and uh, he's, you know, he's a contact guy. He pitches to contact, so there are some base hits there and guys on base, but uh, there's never panic, and it's great determination out there from Roy. Rich, thanks for being with us. All right, thanks. And a call strike to Carpenter. 0 oh, and 1, and Carpenter looking to. Uh, Move Punto to second base for the top of the order. Raphael for call to follow. These one little things are huge, aren't they, John? They sure are. And one thing the Cardinals do is they teach their pitchers show bunt, bring the bat back, maybe a double threat, then put the bat back to a bunting position. But it gives them the option to do a couple things. That's bunted foul, two strikes. And showing the bat and then bringing it back. If the infielder comes too close to you, the third baseman charges, they teach you to slug bunt it. And what that is is a three quarter swing trying to get it by the drawn in infield. I always viewed it as a, an easier chance to get a free hit it's because <laughs> the position is out of place. Polanco has moved back into the cutout part of third base and the throw over to first. Philly's still wary of the bunt with two strikes. Squaring around, and there's the bunt. Fair. And it's a double play. Carpenter didn't even bother getting out of the batter's box to run. Handled by Carlos Ruiz. And the double play, 2 6 4 right here. The reason that this is a great play is Cruz Ruiz, with that quickness, comes out in front of the plate, makes sure he gets that baseball before it will have a chance to bounce foul. Carpenter stays in the batter's box. That allows them to turn to easy double play. The little things can sometimes come back to haunt you. So, two down to Raphael for call. And there you saw Roy Halliday. Uh, Pointing to Ruiz very alertly starting that play. So a possibility for the Cardinals to get a runner in scoring position. Instead, there are two down. And for call, lifts it in the air to Abanez in left field. And a quick inning for Roy Halliday. It remains one to nothing in favor of St. Louis. As the Phillies back in the fifth.
generous this fall in support of cancer research. Visit standuptocancer.org slash MasterCard for more details. Well, Ruiz might be struggling offensively, but it never affects his defensive game. His little butt in front of the plate is quickness, and he didn't take anything for granted. Came out shooting from that spot. Good throw down to Rollins. Rollins takes his time to complete the double play. Carpenter was hoping that ball was foul and just a strikeout, not a double play. Lasano Polanco leading off in the fifth against Chris Carpenter. Cardinals leading one nothing in the first pitch. It's a strike. So it's Polanco and Ruiz, and then Roy Halladay. Polanco and Ru Ruiz are a combined three for 32 in this series. Well, just what I thought. You can tell by watching this game, both pitchers are nervous. Uh, they don't feel good. They don't look good. <laughs> Quite the opposite. I think this is exactly what we thought we'd see. Two guys in command, and certainly one run might be enough. No but, walks in the game, John, yeah. and each pitcher has had only one three ball count thus far. You never know what events will transpire when you're drafted by a team that will sometimes put you on the same field and the same time and the same place, and both these guys delivering so far. One, two, slowly hit to for call. Polanco's retired, one away. And right now, let's check in with Matt Weiner in our Atlanta studio. All right, Matt, thank you very much. One out, Carlos Ruiz, who fly to Berkman in right field his first time up. So uh, you guys are going to be taking off, uh, maybe. It depends on this game maybe. here. Yeah. Hey. Don't give up your room yet. But John's got a plane. We'll, we'll take off wherever we have to go at some point. <laughs> Ryan Anderson will be joining Ron Darling and John Smoltz. For the National League Championship Series as Ruiz chops it to for call and makes the play for out number two. And of course we throughout this playoff sending our best to Ernie Johnson uh, who has been uh, tending to his son Michael and his illness and all of us wish Ernie Johnson the best. Absolutely. Two down and Roy Halliday coming up. Struck out his first time up. Takes down low ball one. Lead off hitter Jimmy Rollins would be next. And there's a chopper to third base. Freeze. Back hands it. And three ground balls, three outs. As Carpenter retires the side in order. One to nothing on that first inning run for the Cardinals going to the sixth.
nights on TBS. The Conan Blimp and aerial coverage are brought to you by AT&T. Rethink Possible. Well, the Cardinals so far have taking the one nothing lead and it's held up as John Jay will come to the plate for the first time. He went into the game as a defensive replacement for Skip Schumacher who pulled an oblique went into the third inning. So here is uh, Jay who is two for 11 in the series. But both of his hits came in game two and they both knocked in runs as the Cardinals won here last week. First pitch of strike to Jay. Well, this is a big part of the game, not just because it's the sixth inning, but Doc Halliday made the last out, which means when he goes to the dugout, the top of the order, his lineup gives him the best chance to score a run. And, of course, you got the meat of the, the lineup here for St. Louis. So a big inning. He also knows, as a National League, you're going to get pinch hit for late in the game. Unless the game's tied or you're winning. Big couple innings for Doc. One and two now to Jay. John, that epic battle you had with Jack Morris, is there a point where you know you can't give up any more runs or give up a run? Well, absolutely. I mean, certainly you, you're you going against the guy who's hot in your offense. Butley takes the flip. And so all you're trying to do is put your team in a chance for that one two-out hit or that two-run homer, and the game's over. <laughs> I mean, Doc right now feels like he knows he's not giving up any more runs. The team senses it. The pressure and tension builds here at home, especially with the fans, because they know, come on, guys, we just need two. I remember a long time ago, the great Jim Cott, the great left-hander, uh, was pitching against Sandy Koufax in the World <laughs> Series. Game seven, Minnesota was one nothing. runner at second. Manager Sam Mealy came out and said, I'm taking you out. He says, it's only one nothing. He says, Koufax already has it up. <laughs> Here is Albert Pujols, and he takes ball one. Pujols is 0 for 2, struck out his last time. So a lot depends on who the opposite pitcher is and what he needs. The thing about pitching in close games when you're on the side of a one run lead you want it to be close if in a perfect world late they could add a run or two man that is like a huge adrenaline lift. Fair ball third backing up is Polanco outstanding third baseman Polanco has been brilliant in this series handling some tough chances and there are two gone in here in the sixth. Well, he's got a couple of gold gloves. When you watch him, he's playing almost no doubles down the line. And this ball gets an in-between hop. But he has the wherewithal and the patience to wait for it and just make that nice long toss over to first base. Two down to Lance Berkman, who reached on catcher's interference, and that was charged an error to Carlos Ruiz. Fly to center his last time up. Cardinals about hit the Phillies four to two and that run in the first inning standing up here is the Cardinals batting in the sixth the winner of this game will take on the Milwaukee Brewers in the National League Championship Series and for the loser the season will be over. Oh and two. One thing you never want to see Mr. Berkman do is set his bat down after he hits it one of the best home run. You know, you can't get mad at the guy when he hits a home run and sets it down nicely for you. One ball and two strikes. And again, Berkman, who hit the three-run homer in the first inning of game number one, and also hit a home run against Halliday on September 19th, the solo drive. So he has been able to go deep against this great righty. Two down, the one-two pitch. Checks the swing. They did not go around. Side and Utley on the outfield grass playing it perfectly makes the play three ground balls three outs for Halliday in the middle of the six Cardinals one the Phillies nothing.
John Smoltz uh, telegraphed, uh, this is a big inning for the Phillies. Yeah, it really is. The crowd senses it, and I'm sure it all starts with Jimmy Rollins. And anyway, anyhow, he can get on. Sometimes Jimmy will sneak attack you on the first pitch. Gets the curve over for a strike. Rollins is 0 for 2, but has nine hits and has been on base ten times in this series. As a pitcher, you know what parts of the game are real important when the lineup comes up, and you're just trying to get that first guy out so it doesn't get hectic in here, and you think too much about the noise and what's... You know, I call it the what if scenario. Never think of what if happens when you're pitching. One batter at a time, one pitch at a time. Two one pitch, ground ball left side for call. And Rollins is retired. He's 0 for 3, but Craig Sager to Jimmy Rollins, the glass is always half full. Well, you know, this is a fifth straight year the Phillies have won the division title, but he told me before the series, a totally different atmosphere in the clubhouse. He says, this team just has it. I go, what's it? He says, experience, talent, confidence. We will not lose. I talked to him before the game tonight. I said, you feel that still that same way, even though it's tied? He said, absolutely. We are not going to lose. We'll see if it happens. <laughs> well, he's delivered thus far in the series, although he has been stymied over three thus far. Here's Chase Utley, who struck out and then was hit by a pitch. One and oh, Art Hunter Pence on deck. As Chris Carpenter with that one nothing lead has retired the side in order in three of the first five innings. One and one. Well, we talked about it in the beginning. His curveball has been fantastic. He's thrown it for strikes. He's thrown it down at their feet. He's really kept the hitters off balance and really a lot of balls up the middle to shortstop second base. That's what you want when you're throwing. <laughs> and a call strike and it's one and two. Well when you watch Ryan Howard on the bench you've got a couple of shots at him. You don't need to know the stats on what he's hitting this series. Grounded and Pujols deflects it. And it gets by Punto in the right field. So Chase Utley with a one out single and the tying run is at first with Hunter Pence coming to the plate. Hit number three for Philadelphia. Well, Albert covers so much room at first base. He's on the line, but once he dives for it, it defects off his glove and goes past Punto. And if you watch up, he's always hustling. Watch him and Carpenter trying to beat each other to the bag. And kind of make it a turn Carpenter does with him. Almost looks like he wanted to tackle him. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you he did. <laughs> so here's Hunter Pence. Grounded to short and reached on a fielder's choice. And stranded at third in the fourth inning. Phillies at first and third did not score. And he looks ugly back to the bag. What did we say earlier in the broadcast? Pence was supposed to be the piece they were missing. Well, Carpenter's going to do a nice job of holding Utley close. Utley can steal the base. The big equalizer in this, though, Molina and his golden right arm. Throws as well as any catcher in the National League. And the strikeout, throwout, double play in the first inning. Into the Phillies with only two runs. There goes the runner, Utley going. There's the throw to second. They get him. Chris Guccione, the second base umpire. And you just said it, Ron Darling. Yadier Molina, and after a good jump by Utley. I want you to watch how he sets up. He looks at the runner, and he knows he's going. He comes out and fires a strike to second. I didn't think there was any chance with this jump on a curveball that he had him. But unreal throw. Ah, Yadier Molina, very big play, and the count 0-1 to Pence, and that uh, 
Knocks the wind out of the sails of this crowd at this point. Let's not underestimate the tag by Punto. I mean, as quick a hands as you're going to see to get that ball down on Utley's foot. In there, and it's one and two to Hunter Pence. Saying in the first inning of the last game in St. Louis. Phillies were primed for the big inning. But a strikeout and a, a gun down to second by Molina ended that inning. Now the count two and two with nobody on base and two away. These fans, I can't even tell you how much they expect this team to go to the World Series. They're feeling the pressure of the drought of runs. They've seen it at times, but they're just looking for something big, a double, an extra base hit, obviously a home run. And that'll go to Punto. And that'll do it. So a one out single and then thrown out stealing was Chase Utley. And after six innings, the Cardinals leading the Phillies one to nothing in the deciding game. I want you to look at his head. He's looking over at the runner as he sees him go. Now he knows he's going so he can pounce and go. A release that's so quick. And the thing about when you watch um, Molina there is that he didn't take away the strike. He right. caught it for a strike first and then made the throw. Matt Holiday swings and misses on the first pitch. This was the tag. Well, the great thing about Punto, he's put in for defensive purposes, slaps that tag right on the calf of Utley before his foot touches. That was outstanding. One and one to Holiday, who fouled out to Polanco and struck out. On the inside corner, one and two. So as was the case in the first game of the series, Halliday taking a while to get in the groove. Six of the eight base runners with the first two innings. There's a drive hit deep to center field. Victorino back and makes the catch on the warning track right in front of the 409 foot sign. Matt Holiday. Hit it to the deepest part of this ballpark, and he's retired for out number one. And here's Molina, who has a single and a stolen base in two trips.
strike one to Yadier Molina. Four hits for the Cardinals. Two coming in the first inning when for call led off with a triple to right center field and Skip Schumacher doubled into the right field corner. That's been the only run of the game. And the count two strikes now to Molina. It's not this easy. If you think pitching in a one nothing game these guys are making it look real easy and it's it's tough for the hitters obviously to square anything up because nothing is around the plate. It's only the third time that former Cy Young Award winners have opposed each other in an elimination game. Halliday has won two Cy Young Awards and Carpenter has won one. But Chris Carpenter has the one thing that Holiday Holiday wants, and that is a World Series ring. That's why he's with the Phillies. Well, Holiday said when he came over, the reason he wanted to come to the Phillies, he wanted an opportunity to pitch for a championship and to pitch in the postseason. His first start, not too bad, no hitter. But these are the starts right here that. Are the most difficult. And Molina out on strikes. This is a front door cutter that is so difficult for a hitter. Looks like it's a fastball in and it cuts back over the inside part of the plate. A pitch that Halliday has just perfected. Again, it looks like he's going to throw a fastball, but that spin and that cut brings it back over the plate. Fifth strikeout for Halliday. And David Fries has been a strikeout victim in each of his first two trips to the plate, takes ball one. Why I think this is the most pressure on any team in the playoffs because they have the deepest pitching staff. A best of five series, anything really can happen. If you're going to beat the Phillies, mo most people think the best chance is a best of five. If they were to move forward, they're so far better than the rest because they've got four yeah. quality, great starters. Pitch is inside. And the count is 2 0, and that's why game two, the victory by the Cardinals against Cliff Lee, was significant. They're built for 162. They're built for a seven game series, a little vulnerable in the five game series. Fouled at the plate. And the reason that is, somebody might say, well, wait a minute, they got four great starters, but you can get by with two if you're facing them. Two great starters in a best of five, other teams can, can throw at there. But in a seven series, you got to stretch those guys out. You need that fourth guy. And a base hit to left field for David Freeze. Ibanez coming over, the big turn at first. A two out single by Freeze, and that's the fifth hit of the game against Halliday. Well, really, Freeze has sta faced a steady diet of breaking balls. Finally, one a little up in the strike zone. Not an awful breaking pitch, but good swing by Freeze. It's that ball to nine down the line. He had an idea of going for two, but nice hustle by Ibanez. I think what they're going to talk about right here is obviously the pitchers on deck. You have an opportunity in the National League to still not have to face this guy in the eighth hole if you think he can hit a double down the line. But the perfect world is you want the pitcher leading off next inning. And we have a pitch runner, Daniel Descalso, who is the glove man at third base for Tony La Russa, has gone in a run for freeze with two out. And Nick Punto, who singled his last time up, one for two, going the opposite field. So in this situation, you let the count dictate how you're going to pitch to the eighth hitter. And the first pitch is a strike. Cardinals really went into some meetings to decide whether Descalso would replace Freeze in the last game. They decided to go with Freeze, and he delivered with a two run homer along with a two run double. <laughs> 0 and 2 now to Punto. Seventh inning as Punto strikes out. Two this inning, six in the game.
Cardinals lead the Phillies one to nothing as we go to the seventh inning. Cardinals coming up for well, the Phillies coming up in the uh, seventh inning against Chris Carpenter. Want to remind you this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the office of the commissioner of baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. And now it's time for the state of the game brought to you by State Farm. And the Milwaukee Brewers advancing to the NLCS and will play the winner of this game. And it will be Sunday at 4 o'clock Eastern. Right here on TBS. Right now the Cardinals lead one to nothing. It has been 30 years since the Phillies faced a do or die situation game. That was back in 1981. And uh, this crowd has been positive right now. It's a one to nothing game and they're just waiting for the Phillies to kind of get the edge there as Cliff Lee begins to throw in the moment for the Phillies. Ryan Howard will lead it off here in the seventh. That was a pretty good matchup in 1981. Also, yeah. Steve Rogers for the Montreal Expos and Steve Carlton for the Philadelphia Phillies. Well, in this situation right here, a walk's not a bad thing for Howard. I know he's trying to make things happen via the bat. He's been aggressive, and he's fed right into what Carpenter's doing, jamming him, broke his bat his last time. We'll see if he has any patience leading off this inning to get a pitch he wants. Maybe take a pitch, watch it all the way in. He is 0 for his last 13. Down low, ball one. Charlie Manuel has talked to Ryan Howard about this winter thinking about moving closer to the plate. Right now he's in his bat is decelerating as it goes for the strike zone. And Carpenter falls behind two balls and no strikes. And Howard, despite his hitting woes since the first game, still has six RBIs to lead the field. Three and oh. Well, this is a good sign right here. I mean. He's been aggressive. Now he's taken some pitches. Now he has the luxury, you know, if he wants to take another pitch to see what Carp's going to do or swing 3 and 0. More than likely, a fastball right here. And gets the green line and a line drive to Berkman in right field. And out number one. And Carpenter gets Ryan Howard after falling behind 3 and 0. That's the first smile we've seen from Carpenter so far. Look at how judicious he's been with his pitches so far. 79 Holiday, 105 after seven innings. I would not let Howard swing the bat there at 3 0. He's not swinging well enough for me to give him that opportunity. They need a base runner, especially with Shane Victorino, who has two of the three Phillies hits coming up. Doubled in the second, single in the fourth. And on the first pitch, fastball fouls it back. I don't know what's nicer, a double play or a 3-0 out. I think it's the 3-0 <laughs> out right now. <laughs> and the only reason I say that, I, Howard is, has been struggling, even though he has a six RBI. Who's taking the best at bats tonight? Victorino, who's up now. Two balls in one strike. Keep in mind that uh, if Carpenter gets the Phillies in order, may not have to face the heart of the order in the ninth inning. Exactly right. And every pitcher knows they play the adding game, and he certainly had a pitch count where he could finish it if he keeps going at this rate. Count is two and two to Victorino. Three hits for the Phillies. Victorino with the double and the single, and Chase Utley with a one out single in the sixth. And he was thrown out attempting to steal by Adio Molina. Check to swing as they check with Jerry Meals, the third base umpire. Now three and two. Again, when you're throwing pitches in, this curveball in is a. Is, is one of those things that left-handers like to go after, especially in the dirt. He obviously did not 
attempt to swing it. Chopped to Pujols, who steps on the band. Good pitch by Carpenter in on the fist as he gets Victorino for the first time tonight, and there are two gone in the seventh. We have not been disappointed by the pitcher's duel set up tonight with Carpenter and Halliday. Now, the only difference was about 30 some pitches in the first inning, and Doc has been just equally to the task as is Carpenter. And I'll tell you what, you just, in a game like this, you keep grinding away, getting outs and outs and outs. Any run from this point on seems like we talked about if you get a two run lead when you're pitching one nothing all your game, you're like, oh my gosh, that's a big lead. <laughs> Here's Abanez with two away. Fouled out to Punto and fly out to right and takes ball one outside. Phillies are one swing away from making that all disappear and equaling it back up. That's what Ryan Howard had in mind when he uh, swung on a 3-0 pitch. But that's sometimes the problem, isn't it? It's that you have a lineup all trying to be the hero. One swing of the bat to get him back in the game. Yes, can they do that? Absolutely. But you also want to try to work a rally. One one pitch and John you were saying that the one thing you want is a base runner and to get the leadoff man on even if it's Ryan Howard who's your slugger in a game like this with Victorino coming out to just change to what the pattern has been for this offense. Yeah some of the biggest plays in the biggest games are not necessarily a hit it could be a walk. And that walk can lead to so many different things. So Carpenter has gone to the three ball count on two hitters here in the seventh inning after Going to three balls only once previously. Now we're three and two. It's been amazing. Both series, the Yankees lose a one run game, the Diamondbacks lose a one run game. We're in this game five, a one run game. All the little things that you work so hard for spring training, the fundamentals, the execution, so important here in the last couple of days. One hopper to Nick Punto and a one, two, three inning for Chris Carpenter. Phillies retired in the seventh, Cardinals batting in the eighth. That one run lead in the first inning holding up.
And the St. Louis Cardinals, who really in the last three or four weeks, every game has been practically an elimination game for them. And this is that kind of a game for them and the Phillies as Chris Carpenter takes ball one. Carpenter has grounded out and attempting a sacrifice, bunted into a double play. Reaches out and fouls it away. You know, Tony LaRusso said that a half dozen times in September, they had a game that if they didn't win it, they were done for the rest of the year. And every time they came up with a win, and especially on the road, and it might sound, sound trite and sophomoric, but all the players said, guys, let's win today. Let's make it a happy flight. A happy and flight. that's what they've really, really hung their hat on uh, this season, or really since uh, September. And ball strike to Carpenter. In fact, it was a loss to the Mets that you thought was going to do it for the Cardinals and then they lose the first game of the series against the Astros in extra innings and you said that was going to ruin their chances and there is Carpenter getting a base hit through the middle and past his buddy Roy Halliday we've been talking about Halliday and Carpenter who were with the Toronto Blue Jays Craig Sager has more well, we've been talking about the tail of the tape, the fact that they are best friends. They are former teammates with the Toronto Blue Jays, but there's also more to the story. They both had their problems. Carpenter had injuries when he was there. Holiday had lack of confidence, got sent to the minors. He said David Wells, his former teammate and our studio analyst, changed his career. I said, how? He said, Wells told him with a backhand a compliment, if I had your arm, I'd win 25 games every year. There's for a call with the bunt. Ruiz going to second, and it's safe at second base as Jimmy Rollins sees the ball roll away, and I'm not sure that Carpenter would have been safe anyway, even if he had held on to it. Well, it's a bad choice by Ruiz, who doesn't make a lot of bad choices. He knows this run is so important, so he was going to be real aggressive and trying to get Carpenter, the pitcher, at second base. But watch how far this bunt rolls. It's almost halfway out to the mound and throwing on the run with all those catches equipment. One, two, three strikes. He didn't make the play. And Rich Duby, the pitching coach, going to the mound. They rule it a fielder's choice and an error charge to Carlos Ruiz. That's his second error of the game. Ryan Matson, the Phillies' closer, is now warming up in their bullpen. That's got to be a sacrifice and a knee on the catcher. Well, TBS, October 18th, prepare for nerd domination. Don't miss the Big Bang Theory, all new to TBS Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday nights starting October 18th. I didn't know you knew that much about that. <laughs> well, someone to say it takes one to know one. Uh, I don't want to go that far. And here's John Jay looking to bunt. And did not offer at it, so it's ball one to Jay. Interesting strategy here. If he gets the bunt down and moves the runners over, more than likely, you're going to walk Pujols, your best hitter. You've got Carpenter at second. Not the easiest of task to get to third and bunting a pitcher over to third. If I were the Phillies, I'd make sure I watch John Jay, who steps almost on the plate when he tries to bunt. And he takes ball two, John Jay. Who came in for the injured Skip Schumacher in the third inning defensively, 0 for 1 since he's come in the game at the plate. This would be a good count to take the bunt off. 2 and 0. Get aggressive. Try and steal a couple more runs here with. 2 0 bunt. Perfect down the third base line and Polanco. Getting it over to Utley for the force and the sacrifice for the out and the sacrifice sends runners to second and third. And you know, the way Carpenter was running to second on that first play, you knew that he could motor over to third. So good sacrifice by Jay. And gets congratulations to the dugout. One out and runners at second and third. And they go to walk Pujols as advertised. And pitch to Lance Berkman with the bases loaded. Well, there's only about a handful of pitchers in baseball that would walk the bases loaded 
a left-hander, a switch hitter like Berkman, who really does not hit great from the right side, and you wouldn't change him to that right side with a left-handed reliever because you have one of the best pitchers in baseball. And Berkman, who hit a home run against him in the first game of the series and one in September, and uh, this is a critical moment in this game with the Cardinals. And you just mentioned what it's like for a pitcher to see the lead greater than one to nothing. Yeah, this is, I mean, I know he's standing on third base, but it's a one nothing game. You've been grinding. But the Cardinals squeeze out a run here. If two, it just sucks the air out of this stadium and certainly puts St. Louis in the enviable position of finishing this thing off. And conversely, if you can somehow get out of this without giving up a run, it can propel your offense. Berkman 0 for 3, reached on an error, and offers at the first pitch 0 and 1 to Lance Berkman. So difficult to square up Halliday, thinking you're going to get maybe a, a pitch on the inner half, and it drops out of the zone. And a guy who's very disciplined just swung at the first pitch in the dirt. Takes it outside, 1 and 1. Carpenter, the runner at third, for a call is at second, and Pujols at first, with one away here in the eighth inning. One to nothing, the Cardinals lead. Trying to win this game five, and Berkman swings and misses one and two. This is the greatness of Halliday, if he can take care of Lance Berkman. For Roy Halliday. I don't think you can get a tougher batter that you have to face. A great contact hitter and just did not miss with any of his pitches. Just precise, perfect, did not allow him to extend those arms. Berkman down. And Matt Holliday with the bases loaded, but now with two away. Cardinals had an opportunity with a well-placed grounder or fly ball to get that second run in. But now there are two down. Holiday, 0 for 3. <laughs> ball one. Boy, that's a big no call there from the home plate umpire. Real tough pitch. Close pitch. What do you think, John? Inside cutter right there. If anything, maybe just a tad low, but you know Doc wanted it. Now behind 2 0. The only walk in this game by these two premier pitchers was the intentional pass to Pujols here in the eighth inning to load the bases. Ball strike two and one. You're not going to get a chance to look at two in a row right there. But that was not the pitch Matt Holiday wanted either. Looking for one more up in the zone that he can drive in the gap. Took something off that one. And now it's two and two to Matt Holiday. Hit to left field. Abania is coming on over and makes the catch to retire the side. And Ron Darling, your observation right on the money. This crowd pumped up as Halliday retires the Cardinals with the bases loaded.
2011 Major League Baseball League Championship Series on TBS and Fox. Join the postseason debate at MLBFanCave.com and follow the action on Twitter with the hashtag postseason. Legends are born in October. Moments ago, the scene in the Phillies dugout. Well, he knows, and it's just a heroic effort. Guy's an unbelievable pitcher and just really did everything he can. I said earlier, each pitcher's allowed two mistakes. You hate to have one mistake <laughs> and one run beat you in this game. Well, it'll be the bottom third of the order, and uh, let's see whether Chris Carpenter is affected by being on the bases as much as he was in the top of the eighth inning. Placido Polanco twice his grounder to short and is way ahead of that pitch, strike one. Well, Polanco has struggled. You see the pitch count now, still incredibly low for Carpenter. He struggled offensively in this series. He has a sports hernia that he's been nursing all season long. Surgery after the playoff. One ball and one strike. So here you have Carpenter who would love to get out of this inning in order and the boy perhaps facing Howard and Victorino in the ninth inning if he can dispose of these Phillies hitters. And the Phillies trying to capitalize on getting out of the last inning. But here's for call and he throws out Polanco for the third time and there's one away here in the eighth. Carlos Ruiz coming up. You're throwing that cutter and that power sinker that Carpenter has. You're going to keep your infielders busy. For call has been steady. He's made all the plays. Certainly the leadoff hitter just doesn't get on that often when you're on top of your game like Carpenter is. And Ross Glowed is out in the on-deck circle as a pitch hitter for Halliday. Here is Ruiz. And he takes strike one. Ruiz is fly to right and grounded to for call. From the Dodgers and paying dividends at shortstop since his acquisition. All of these special performances seem to always take a little magic with the leather, and that's the magic there by Fercal. 14 ground ball outs, none bigger than this one right here. Two outs in the eighth. He gets up, knows the runner, and has a strong arm. Nice follow through. So the veteran Raphael for call and the first pitch to Ross Glode, the pinch hitter, is a strike. Glode is one for one as a pinch hitter earlier in the series. Batting for Roy Halliday here in the bottom of the eighth inning. One and one. Molina for call. Cardinals leading this game in fist bumps. Two down. Breaking ball, strike two. And Claude. Strike three, and Molina safe at first base. Yadier Molina had trouble finding the ball. And he fired widely to Pujols off the bag, and Globe becomes a base runner. Well, what happened to Molina is that he smothered this ball in the dirt, but he could not find it. Finally, he flips his mask off, rushes the play, just enough to throw that ball wide to Albert Pujols. Can't find it, shakes his mask off, Globe hustling down that first baseline. And see how he kicks it into fair territory? But by the time he throws a little cut on that baseball and why what this does is guarantees unless there's a pickoff or thrown out stealing Howard to get up. Yes in the next inning and Michael Martinez has gone into run for Glode who is safe on the error by Molina. So the tying run with good speed 
is Martinez at first with two out and Jimmy Robbins who is 0 for 3 and takes ball one. Rollins has had two hits in each of the first four games of the series, but Carpenter has set him down three times thus far tonight. Don Mayberry. You, know, you had it right. This is Michael Martinez. Yes, it's Martinez. And there's a shot off the glove of Carpenter. From the first base, and in time, Punto, and for call, both making sparkling plays here in the eighth inning. In back of Chris Carpenter. And it remains one to nothing as the Cardinals come to bat in the ninth. As the Cardinals come up in the ninth inning, and uh, it seems, guys, that the drama and the situation on the field is uh, increasing uh, each inning as we get to the ninth inning. There's so, only one place I'd rather be in a game like this is out on the mound. Right. In the dugout, you are dying. Your stomach's killing you. You're a mess. You're yeah. a mess. But uh, unbelievable game. For Call with the big triple and scoring the run, the great defensive play in the eighth, and Molina gunning down Utley in the sixth. Two of them really with the for call and then Punto to get that last out. But as you mentioned, John, Ryan Howard will be coming up for the Phillies. Third in the bottom of the ninth inning. Yadier Molina, one for three with a single and a stolen base, starts against Ryan Matson, who appeared in the first three games of the series, got the final two outs with a pair of strikeouts in game one. And pitched a scoreless night with two strikeouts to keep the game at 5-4, eventually won by the Cardinals in the second game, and had a five-out save in game three. We talked to Charlie Manuel before the game about Ryan Madsen, who has been shuttled back and forth from a starter to a reliever long man occasionally gets a shot as being a closer he said he has established himself as a closer now and through all that change up on any count converted 32 of 35 save opportunities in the regular year 2-1 pitch and can't find him Ryan Madsen can't find it but a great recovery by Carlos Ruiz to throw out Molina Molina would respect that and there's one gone in the Cardinal night. 
How about the hustle by Ruiz? We saw it on the bunt play. It didn't come into play. But here off the leg of Madsen. Ruiz with the hustle and finds it. Fires it. On the run. And then out. One, two, three. <laughs> That's how it's been for most of the hitters tonight. <laughs> One, two, three, go sit down. Well, here's Daniel Descalso, who came in to uh, run for David Freeze in the seventh inning and brought in for defensive purposes. This is his first out bat of the game. Ball in one strike. Roy Halliday working eight innings, giving up a run on six hits, striking out seven. One intentional pass. And the Cardinals getting that one run in the first inning. One and two now to Descasso. Well, because St. Louis has been through this the last 20 or 30 games, I'm sure their heart beats right where it has been all 30 games. Like, this might be their comfort zone. <laughs> Down low, and they're looking to make a happy trip, perhaps, to Milwaukee. And that's what they would do, and they would leave tonight if they can hold their lead against the Phillies. It'll be Utley, Pence, and Howard. Scheduled hitters in the bottom of the night. And Descalso goes down for out number two. Even with all the hustle by Ruiz. Well, here's the play by Punto. My apologies. Great play at first base. And he does get him just by an eyelash. Punto has been a big part of this entire game, hasn't he? Slap tags, line drives caught, ground ball plays made. And this for a player that had appeared just twice as a pinch hitter coming into this one. But Tony LaRusso aware of his uh, pedigree coming into postseason with the Twins twice. Nick Punto with the count one and zero oh as one of the six hits for the Cardinals. Chris Carpenter would be next, and he's on deck. Nothing going on in the Cardinal bullpen. <laughs> Fastball one and one. Cardinals with a first inning run on a triple by for call. Skip Schumacher's double, one to nothing. And that has been the only scoring in the game. One and two now to Punto. Well, we talked about use that crowd to your advantage if you're a visiting pitcher. And the, what Carpenter's been able to do is get the leadoff guy out. The Cardinals have made all the big plays. St. Louis had. Their opportunity in the first inning and taking advantage of it. Now they got to sweat out possibly one more inning with a one run lead. It's a foul ball. So the count will remain one ball and two strikes. And this game, a lot of times, games don't turn out to be as advertised with uh, a classic matchup of pitchers, but we have had it. Tonight. Sometimes it's the subtle lineup changes that managers make. Last night for the Detroit Tigers, Don Kelly in the game, he homers. Tonight, Punto with his great defensive plays, Schumacher in center field for the second time this year with a start. He drives in the run. One two pitch. And Punto strikes out. Matt Matson strikes out two. And now the Phillies. With all their success. Have one more at bat.
game analysis from Tom Verducci and the staff of award-winning SI writers at si.com slash MLB. One to nothing in the Phillies coming up in the bottom of the ninth inning. Needing a run in the fifth of the deciding game against the wild card Cardinals. Arthur Rhodes, the left-hander, and Jason Mott, who's been the closer, throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. Chase Utley leading off against Chris Carpenter. Utley, the only Philly hitter to reach leading off an inning when he was hit by a pitch in the fourth inning. First pitch, drive, hit the center field. John Jay is back and makes the catch on the base of the wall for out number one. Utley first pitch fastball by Carpenter trying to streak one, sneak one past him. Little sinker down in the zone. The only reason that ball stayed in the ballpark. A bullet to center field. Nice play by John Jay. So Utley exhibiting some of that power that he had had in previous years. And now Arthur Hunter Pence is coming up 0 for 3. With Ryan Howard on deck. One out, bottom of the night. Bows off the first pitch in on the fifth. Also at third. Two gone in the bottom of the ninth inning. And fittingly, the Phillies, who are down to their last out, will have Ryan Howard coming up, who is 0 for his last 14, facing Chris Carpenter with the season on the line. Well, I'll tell you, competition, competition can bring about strange bedfellows. A sweep of the Phillies of the Atlanta Braves the last three games of the season ensured the Cardinals would make it as the wild card and face the Phillies. Cardinals won 23 of their last 32 games or 10 and a half behind the Braves on the 25th of August. And the first pitch to Howard Ball one. He's going to have to show some kind of patience. I know this is two outs. Carpenter is going to go after him, but he's going to go after him trying to get him to swing out of the zone. One and one now to Howard. This crowd of 46,530 on their feet. Fouled at the plate, and now the Phillies down to their last strike. One ball, two strikes to Ryan Howard, two out here in the ninth inning. Cardinals getting their run in the first inning, and it has held up since. Well, he's had that curveball all night. He's gone in for effect. Does he throw that curveball, try to bounce it down by the foot of Howard and get the strikeout to end the game? Two and two. I would be surprised if he doubles up. He did not make a good pitch there. This is not a guy bothered by the tension of finishing a game. This guy's been there before Carpenter. Look for him to make the adjustment right here. Brown ball to the right side. Puncho has it. And running over, and the Cardinals have done it. The St. Louis Cardinals. Improbable in making the playoffs. And Ryan Howard is down. He is hurt. Halfway between home and first base. So Howard is hurt, and the Cardinals are celebrating out around first base. Chris Carpenter with a brilliant pitching performance, but a concern for Ryan Howard here. As soon as it came out of the box, I don't know whether he turned his ankle or if it's an Achilles problem, but no chance he could make it down to first base as the Cardinals celebrated. A discouraging finish to the Phillies season. They put this team together to go to the World Series. 
Howard is hurt, but what about the St. Louis Cardinals? A never say die team, John Smoltz, who are seemingly out of the wild card. They were eight and a half back in September to the Braves, and they win this series in a decisive fifth game on the road. Well, it's unbelievable. It just goes to show you when you play the season to the final out, you never know what's going to happen. You look at the highlight right here, and this is what this manager was put, trying to put his team in position for. Game five, Carpenter on his back. A memorable game for the St. Louis Cardinals and a memorable moment for Chris Carpenter. And for the first time since 2006, the Cardinals find themselves in the National League Championship Series. Chris Carpenter, on full rest, comes back and pitches a three-hit shutout to beat the Phillies on the road in a huge matchup with two pitching greats. But the Cardinals prevail more than nothing. Disappointment for Ryan Madsen and the rest of the Philadelphia Phillies. Sheer joy for the Cardinals. Chris Carpenter. Happy flight, indeed. Yes, on their way to Milwaukee for the National League Championship Series and uh, a, a real odd scene here in Philadelphia where the visiting Cardinals are celebrating. The crowd is stunned and their star Ryan Howard injured getting out of the batter's box and down between first and home plate let's go down to craig sager who's with chris carpenter well chris uh you won a cy young you won a world series but in this deciding game for both teams have you ever pitched a better game i don't know uh it was, it was, it was some kind of fun you know we get, we get out there and was able to get that that one run early off doc he was dominant the rest of the game um, I got out of a couple jams with some great defensive plays, but uh, what an awesome night. I mean, unbelievable. It was one nothing in the fifth inning, and John Smoltz said, that one run may hold up. Did you think it would? I was just doing the best I could, keep getting head and counts, and, and let my guys catch the ball behind me. These guys were aggressive tonight, but I was able to uh, to keep the ball down. Uh, like I said, some guys made some great plays behind me, and uh, the rest is, uh, is what you saw. It was a great pitching performance, great defensive performance. But what was the biggest pitch you threw tonight? Uh, the last one right there to get the L. No question about it. You went against your good friend Roy Holiday. Everybody talked about this matchup. Your manager was hoping for it after game two. But what was it like for you? Uh, it was another game, you know. Uh, you know, obviously with all the hype leading up to it, uh, he's a great friend of mine. Uh, and uh, like I said, he did a great job tonight also. He battled and, and dominated the, pretty much the whole game except for that first inning where we snuck one in on him. But uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. After all this team has been through, down ten and a half games to the Braves in the wild card back in August 26th, did you find comfort in the fact you've been in so many tough situations down the stretch in tonight's game? I think guys were just relaxed and, and having fun. Uh, we, you know, we were got put ourselves in a position where everybody was expecting us to have no chance, uh, and we just started playing like the team we knew we were, and uh, we were fortunate to, to uh, get some help back into it with Atlanta losing, and, and, and we've been playing well the rest of the, the rest of that month. You mentioned all those great defensive plays. One of them was by you when you kicked the ball in that uh, eighth inning. Is your leg all right? I hit it with my glove. I hit it with my glove, and then uh, Nick made an unbelievable play coming in on it. Fuki made some great plays. The guys running balls down the outfield it was great all night. It certainly was. Congratulations. Thank you. Back to you, Doc. All right, and Chris Carpenter sounds like a hockey player from New England, which is exactly <laughs> what he was. And, uh, and there the... Celebrating in the clubhouse of the Cardinals, and right now let's get back to Craig Sager. Well, the game started out with a triple by Rafael Fercal. You went on to score, but terrific defensive effort as well out there. How big a game was this, and how much tension did you feel inning by inning with this one nothing? You know, when you got a guy like Carpenter, you know he's a horse. You know, he's one of the guys always you expect he's going to pitch a great game, no matter what he's doing over there. And then when you play different behind him, you got to be on your toes. It's easy to play different with that guy because you're always ready for you think the ground ball come to you. You've been in some big games with the Atlanta Braves. You started the year with the Dodgers, missed 63 games with an injury, got traded at the trade deadline to St. Louis. What was it like coming over here? How'd you fit in so well? You know, I'm feeling so good. You know, I know coming from one good club, uh, the LA Dodgers, I say thank you. They train me over here, and then when I come here, I see those guys with the uh, same uh, attitude. They want to win. I love to win. I don't like to lose. And then I'm glad to be here and part of this team. You obviously had the big triple, but the play you made on Ruiz in the eighth inning, running through, diving, knocking the ball down, getting up, throwing him out. Did you think you had a chance to get him? 
Yeah, you know, Rui is a catch. I think I don't have a chance for another guy can run pretty good. This is the team. They, everybody in that team is a very aggressive. They can run the base. But I'm catch boy. I say I got to put a song in my arm. I got to throw the best throw of my life. And it was the best for your life. Yeah, it's the best. And then especially when you win. Now we got a happy flight. A happy flight it is. Back up to you, Dick. All right, thank you very much, and we'll have uh, coverage as well of uh, Ryan Howard's injury in the uh, post-game show. And uh, I guess you guys only come to exciting, uh, decisive fifth games of playoffs. Right? Well, you brought us in for this fifth game. What'd you expect? Uh, nine to two? <laughs> You're fine. You're we're we're going to deliver. <laughs> you no, sure did. uh, we didn't do anything. We didn't deliver anything. But I'll tell you, both Carpenter and Holiday did. They were just outstanding just touched in that first inning but you know uh, carpenter did what he had to do john the pitch with just one run lead and knowing that might be the only one well uh, you know i've been on both sides of these and they're not fun to play when you're on the losing side there's certainly a lot of fun as you're seeing the screen right here but i think these two pitchers in, uh, you know epitomized what it is to have these guys on the mound and when you have to win a game what an unbelievable one nothing game one to nothing, the final score. Let's go back down to Craig. Happy play, happy play, happy play. Thanks, Dick. I'm uh, in the dugout right now as Tony LaRusse is coming by. And Tony, you kept telling us all week you wanted this matchup between Carpenter and Roy Holiday here for the deciding game. It's what you wanted. But what was it like for you in the dugout? Well, to be honest, I wanted us to win two in St. Louis. I I'm just saying as a fan, we were blessed to have these two guys uh, who are great pitchers and they have the background they had. I mean, I take my hat off to Roy Halliday with the jam in the first and then again, the seventh grade, whatever it was, to get one run at all. Anybody else would have gotten three or four, but Carp was great today as well. You've won World Series games before. You've won the winningest managers in history, but this team seems to be so different. Down ten and a half games in August to raise the wild card. What makes this team so special? Well, I just think... First of all, the character of the team. We have a bunch of really high character type. I'm not talking about funny character. I'm talking about guts and heart. And we got tested early with Adam Wainwright and right through the first four or five months. And our club was just, hey, look, nothing's going to beat us from competing. If we're not good enough, we're not good enough. And I think that's what's special about this team. We got great guts, great heart. You're a great animal lover. Are we going to see the rally squirrel in the next round? Well, as long as that Miss Squirrely keeps dating uh, Craig's Mr. Torty, uh, I just think we should get a sweep because we don't want him to invite... To, to interrupt the game. I, you know, the problem is that Craig hadn't been playing. I think the squirrel was looking around for Torty because Torty was looking around for Craig. I don't know. That's nonsense. <laughs> it's all nuts. Thanks a lot. Congratulations. Back up to you, Dick. All right. You can have nonsense spoken when you have won a series like this. One to nothing. And uh, let's take a look at the decisive hey, one nothing hey, games hey, hey. in postseason history. Of course, uh, 62 when the Yankees beat the Giants. 91 when the Twins beat the Braves. We'll move over that in a hurry. And of course, tonight, the Cardinals beating the Phillies. And of course, the only previous meeting between St. Louis and Milwaukee, the 1982 World Series. So the final score once again the Cardinals won, the Phillies nothing, and the Cardinals have won this NLDS series three games to two. So for Ron Darling and John Smoltz, and Craig Sager, Dick Stockton, saying so long from Philadelphia. And we'll send you to Inside MLB, presented by Captain Morgan. Remember to drink responsibly right after this. TBS is your exclusive home for the entire 2011 National League Championship Series.